Hello and welcome to Blurry Photos. I am David Flora. And I am Dave Stecco. And we hope you are you and are doing great. But if you aren't you, please send us an email. Yeah. We will be happy to discuss it. That would be awesome. What have you done this past week, Dave? Well, um, in addition to my regular uh, schedule of kicking it both old and new school so as not to lose my skills or street cred, uh, I have been enjoying adventures here in Chicago and working on uh, arts and crafts projects. Yeah. Well, I was in uh, Colorado this past week yeah. enjoying uh, the lovely mountains. Yeah, you you had a magnificent vacation. I sure did. I rode I rode some horses. That was fun. How'd that treat your thighs? You know what? I rode some trail horses, which wasn't so bad on the thighs because the horses basically you know know what they're doing. There was a a. a what would you call it? A private horse? <laughs> so, uh, a friend had had some horses, and I, I got to ride one of them, and got a, a you know like a mini lesson on how to ride and things like that, which I wasn't aware. But you use your legs a lot to you know uh, control the horse, basically like a, a gas pedal on a car almost, and you you really use your thighs for that, and that's what uh, that's that's what got me in the end. The old, uh, the old gas peddling at the horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to squeeze that horse gentle. Yeah, real gentle. Which is, which is terrible because when you feel like you're not in control or you're gonna fall off a horse, you just batten down the hatches and you end up squeezing the horse. And the horse is like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go faster. Yeah. You got it. Yep. Yeah. Or back up. Yeah. Trample you. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was, it was a lot of fun. No, no accidents. Uh, the horses were, were well behaved. I got some good pictures and stuff. I took my dog along. Uh, she had a, a good time being a little mountain goat. Um, although her her, I think her legs started getting a little sore from all the the hiking and stuff that we that we were doing. So I kind of had to back off on the hiking after the third about the third day. You just get one of those baby carriers, put the dog in the front, and you basically just look like the nanciest ass <laughs> out of town or on earth. It's been <laughs> fantastic. Basically, I, I should have. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Your home state, uh, quite quite lovely. The Centennial State <laughs> is it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really puts a lot of things in perspective when you uh, when you spend a lot of time in the city. Yeah, and you go out there and you're like, why is everyone so angry all the time? <laughs> exactly. That's why I love going home so very much. And Oof. you can go entire days and not once see a dead rat. Or have to smell a hobo. Yeah, or have to fend off someone trying to steal your mail. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Also, a future podcast episode, um, Fluoride in the Water. Uh, yeah. Apparently, the, the town I was I was in did not subscribe to the, to the fluoride in the water treatment, so... That was a that was a nice little perk. Even though I don't I don't think I'm even tasted the water. <laughs> how, yeah, I was going to ask you how that affected your vacation. How would you even know that? I asked. <laughs> Dear sweet Jesus. Okay, so you didn't need a dog chest carrier. You just show up, drop your bags, and say, "So fluoride situation in the water here. Where are we at on that?" Uh, also, kept my eye open for some squatch. Squatch. Didn't 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 see any squatch. Green Mountain Falls and Cristola, those are Colorado's squatch capitals. Really? We were featured on an episode of uh, Unexplained Mysteries. That's right. The Unexplained Mysteries. Yeah, yeah. The the actual NBC or possibly ABC primetime <laughs> television show, starring Robert Stack or that other guy who's like the working man's Robert Stack. <laughs> <laughs> Now, where whereabouts in Colorado? What uh, is is that? That is, I mean, almost dead center of the state. Uh, Green Mountain Falls and Cristola are tiny little towns off of I twenty four Ute Pass, due west of Colorado Springs in Manitou. Both of which got kicked quite summarily in the teeth this went this uh, summer for the uh, fires with fires. Ugh. So, uh, if you know, if you are a listener in that area of Colorado, uh, you know the Ute Pass corridor. Um, probably a lot of squatch on the move. The, mm. There was a lot of displaced squatch. So, you know, put wow. out, uh, put out a deer carcass for them, or some berries, or some Cheerios. <laughs> every every for cre- the kids. Every creature on earth likes Cheerios. <laughs> uh, I'm not a creature of this earth, then. Yeah. Well, this this then brings us to uh, this week's topic, mm-hmm. which 
is actually going to be the Denver International Airport conspiracy theory. Which shocked me. I truth, uh, truth of the matter is, until you brought it up, I had no idea that the airport that I fly into and out of on such a regular basis mm-hmm. was a hot spot for conspiracy theories and mysteries abounding. I had no idea. It's weird. And you know what? That's That means that the uh, Illuminati are doing their job. I guess so. I was unaware. I guess so. I And I've, I've been to this airport uh, a few times, too. I mean, probably outside the Chicago airports, it's probably the one I've been to the most, I would say. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, I had no idea, you know, this, this stuff was around. Just mostly because I hadn't heard of it, I think, you know. And uh, and I didn't spend a lot of time in the terminal when when I have been there. And this particular trip, I, I wasn't in the main terminal. I... I didn't have time to go to the main terminal, so I didn't get a chance to see firsthand some of these these uh, symbols and things that we're going to discuss that are supposed Illuminati, New World Order um, hints and clues. And- uh, yeah, it's it's all <laughs> over the place. And, and once I started doing my research on it, I was just amazed at how, I mean, honestly, in some cases I was amazed at how flimsy the, the reach was to make something out of nothing. Sure. But on the other hand, I was kind of amazed at all the things that are going on there that are just so so damned weird. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, uh, DIA was built in 1995, and it encompasses uh, around 51 and a half square miles of land uh, outside of Denver. It's it's not uh, not that close to, to downtown Denver. It's it's no, it's, it's a it's a track. Out. Now Denver already had an airport, the Stapleton yep. Airport, I believe. Uh, and it was a it was a fully functioning airport. Everything worked about it. That kind of led into uh, maybe a birth of some of these these conspiracies. Where it's like, well, we have already got a, an airport that works, and and you know nothing's wrong with it. Why are you building a whole new one? You know, and why all this land and blah blah blah. The thing about the the new one was it had basically less runways. This is what I've I've read. It had less less runways and really no new technology that the Stapleton didn't already have. And so this kind of led to the theory that, oh, this you know this place is going to be a new headquarters for the the New World Order or the the Illuminati. They're going to make their base here or at least make it like a big concentration camp or, you know, some underground bunker or, you know, that's when they just start piling on the (laughs) the theories. Having spent a lot of time there myself, it has at times felt like a concentration camp. (laughs) Um, And I, you know, I didn't live in Denver when this was getting built. I I was in college when they were just fresh into college when they were doing this. And... I recall there was a lot of discussion, and it's the kind of thing I would imagine gets lost over time, that uh, Denver Denver is a city of sprawl. There's a very, very small metro actual thing. downtown with a skyline of buildings, but yeah. it just sprawls eastward onto the plains. It just They just build more houses, and the city just kind of slurges out <laughs> like a puddle. And when Stapleton had been built, it was on the outskirts of Denver. was. Yeah. And, yeah. and so over time, it just... Now there's an airport surrounded by housing developments and things like that and people were upset about the noise mm-hmm. uh people were you know didn't didn't like the jets coming and going people were worried about safety and, and crashes uh um there was a plane crash in colorado springs uh about five years before and they you know that that was a thing that raised a lot of alarms about it and i think that was a lot of the reason that they pushed for for dia to be built so far out mm-hmm. i think and I could completely be manufacturing this in my mind, but there was also sort of a hope that we might get a Winter Olympics. Oh, really? And this was a uh, a means of sort of saying, "Hey, look at look what a big deal we are," because I believe DIA is the single largest by square footage airport in the country. Hmm. It is a it is a, a huge hulking beast of an airport, even bigger than old O'Hare. I believe so. Ye old O'Hare. Ye old O'Hare, because it's just <laughs> it's it's out there in the middle of nowhere. And it did have, uh, as its big crowning jewel, was the the off-publicized uh, baggage system. Mm. The baggage system of the future, where robots will carry your items to and fro. Yeah. Well, that it, was... I, I, you didn't even ask for sound effects. <laughs> Therefore, I did not look one up. I just made one. But it was George Jackson yeah. uh, flying by. There are There is a con- just miles of conveyor belts beneath this place. It was in a fully automated baggage system. Mm. Supposed to be this, 
the most advanced baggage system in the world. Every bag is going to go where it was supposed to. <laughs> and if you saw like footage of it, I'm sure you can still pull it up online. I mean, it, it was like those old uh, like cartoons, the old warm, like do 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 do, just conveyor belts everywhere, hmm. and it failed magnificently. Really, it it cost millions and millions and millions of dollars, and it was never. It, every time they tested it, it failed. It Y2K? never. Y two K. Y two K. Way before Y two K, it was it was actually it failed completely of its own volition. But wow. I'm sure Y Y two K, if it had lived that long, would have also killed it. <laughs> Um, Y2K was the was the fail safe. Yeah, that's why Y2K didn't happen. It may have been the hantavirus outbreak, the four corners disease outbreak that got it, but it it just never worked whatsoever. It was this huge loss of money for the airport, um, and it was a huge deal in, in the state of Colorado. And to this day, they still don't use it. They wow. they're like, well, we'll just do so it. So it's like, there, but they don't they don't use it. I at this point, I mean, I don't even know if the infrastructure is still there, but I believe that that also feeds into. Oh, some of the conspiracy theories that there was all this underground space dug out uh, for all these tunnels and conveyor belts yeah. that were, were never used. And maybe they were never intended to, to oh. work. Maybe oh. they were to transport body bags, mm-hmm. not lady bags. <laughs> <laughs> not handbags? Oh, man that's, bags? That's <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so let's, let's go through some of the... Um, the major symbols and symbolism that, that you find that, that have been linked to this conspiracy mm-hmm. theory. And then we'll go through and throw up uh, the, the debunking of a lot of these. Yeah, we're going to throw up all over we'll the We'll throw debunk. up a, <laughs> quite a bit throughout this this episode. So, <laughs> the, one of the main things you'll you'll read or see when, uh, when you look at, at some of the information on this conspiracy theory is that the runways... Uh, apparently placed in the the shape of a swastika. Now, if you if you take a an aerial image of that and look how they're placed, you can you can perhaps draw a, a swastika how the the runways are are laid out, which you can also do with um, if you pour out some Cheerios. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you can you can do that if you plant wheat. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, if you play with Legos, the Legos will do that for you. There's but, so many ways to see a swastika. So, so that's 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 one of the major things. You 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 can see a swastika from the air if uh, if you look at the <laughs> runways. Uh, another thing, there's a dedication stone that was placed when it was uh, when it was finally completed, and it mentions the it has a Freemason symbol on it, and it mentions the New World Commission. Uh, but apparently, the New World Commission either uh, well, it, it, it existed, but it was it was for a short, very short time, and it was the uh, New World Airport Commission, which was a group of local businesses that organized uh, the opening ceremonies of the airport itself. And uh, apparently, their aim was to create a new, comma, world class city. <laughs> <laughs> Or a new comma world order. <laughs> I don't know. New world comma order. Yeah. yeah I they, don't know. What's What's important <laughs> is that they fueled it. <laughs> they inadvertently or advertently, uh, you know, and that's that's just unfortunate. You know, you put some, uh, and there is, you know, there's there's direct, you know, they have a, a listing of the two big uh, Masonic lodges in uh-huh. in Colorado uh-huh. who participated in the design or the building sure. of it you know they're they're on there and then you put new world on it and so you that you you are planting a seed when you pull that stunt um and there's also what what's the deal with this this huge blue mustang oh blucifer what did you find about him um it is Awful and terrifying and very divisive in Colorado. I remember when this thing was going up. I mean, mm-hmm. I've, I've lived in Chicago now for six, seven years. Uh, but I heard about this. My sister and my mom still live out there. And it was a huge deal because this statue is terrifying and grotesque. <laughs> it is a giant blue stallion rearing up on two legs. And it has just like like zombie. It's it's got these huge purple bulging veins all over it. Hmm. The eyes glow red at night. Wow! And um, if 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 everything about seeing this thing wasn't terrifying enough, the simple fact that this statue killed its creator. Wow! The sculptor 
uh, fell while finishing it, severing an artery and dying. And it was actually completed by his son. I mean, it is absolutely just a spooky thing. And you can't, they, it's placed so prominently, you cannot drive to the airport without driving right by it or leave the airport. Wow. Um, and it, it, it was a huge thing in Denver. No one wanted it. Really? There was a, a huge, I mean, kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek campaign to send protest haikus to the mayor. Because um, if there's one thing that a mayor yeah. responds to, it's Japanese poetry. Exactly, the sparse <laughs> haunting poetry. Um, but yeah, they would. They was there was protest campaigns. I mean, it is, it is spooky. I personally find it awesome, but I know that maybe my particular tastes aren't the common belief, and I have no idea why it was so important for it to be there. Yeah. But it is. It is a terrifying statue. That tells you you have just arrived at the craziest place between New York and L.A. The uh, this yeah the horse I I mean it it does look cool and terrifying and haunting all at the same time, and it and the murals that are in DIA that we'll talk about soon. I just I I gotta wonder whoever designed the airport were they just like you know what let's get some art in here to make it you know aesthetically pleasing you know yeah. it's an airport we need some something that looks not just like cement so let me just contact some people that i know i'll get this guy that sculpts i'll get this guy that does murals and we'll just let them do whatever the f- they want yeah is that what ha- because some of the stuff that they come up with is so weird the, well the horse is a, a more recent uh, addition the horse has only been Put up in the last five years or so. Really? Yeah, Lucifer has, was not there from day one. They had plenty of time to think it over and say, "Yeah, that's what this cocktail needs." Huh. But the art in DIA is fascinating, and and part of it, and I mean, having spent so much time and there's wandering around, and I've seen all these murals with the the jackboot thugs and all the the over heavy handed symbolism. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, truth be told, it is spooky when you when I, I it just never occurred to me to look at it in that light. Um, the murals, or? yeah, the murals. Well, let's uh, let's go on and, and talk about these murals then, because um, this is probably besides well, uh, besides like the swastika and the, the the Freemason and stuff, which are all on one level. I feel like these murals are the real thing that that really vaults this theory up into the conspiracy heavens. Yeah, um, there are there are four murals that were painted by a Mayan. Um, muralist and artist named Leo Tanguma. I hope I pronounced it right. I probably didn't. Um, Leo. Le- <laughs> by old Leo. Uh, the first one depicts three dead women, three dead females, one of them being uh, an African woman, one being a Native American woman, and one being apparently what looks like a Jewish girl, a young Jewish girl. And then there's uh, there's destruction in the background. The The trees are on fire. And uh, there's just a bison that's kind of hanging out and watching too. <laughs> it's a mounted bison. I think. I think at the. I think the indicating being that at the time there's also. I don't know. If, is that an emperor penguin or maybe a dodo? Oh, the flying. Maybe a bird of paradise that's got glass around it. There's lots of. There's lots of references to extinct animals. There's a. Uh, a sea turtle in a net. I think that that's refer- referring to the North American um, bison being uh, pushed to the brink. Oh, there's this, the silver squirrel. Oh yeah. So um, so this. I mean yeah. So this snow leopard. There's it, it's a ton of of uh, symbolism on on you know how basically things are are being pushed to extinction. Things are being destroyed by you know industry things like that. And 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 then there's the. Uh, Oppression of, of peoples of the world, uh, all all in this this one thing. I mean, that's and that's just touching on it. That's probably not even half the symbolism that that's represented in these, and and that's true for every one of these murals. They're so much. They're just packed. They're like Big Macs of, of symbolism. Yeah, they are. They are powerfully dense. And you know, it, 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 I think part of the reason is I think you know Colorado has a, a lot in common with uh, New Mexico. Not as much as New Mexico, but New Mexico has like a lot of this, a very power, a big strong New Age art market mm-hmm. and interest. You know, you can't go to Taos or you know without you know seeing a hundred galleries, and in Colorado has a lot of this also, a huge amount of Native American things, dream catchers hanging off mm-hmm. everything, yeah, and in things like that they get real weird, 
and and maybe that's why I always just dismiss these murals. But sitting now and looking at them, they are. I mean, they there's uh, stacks of ivory. There's this huge environmental ecological. There's a pa- oh, this one kid's carrying a a, a, pa- a carrier pigeon. Yeah. Um, you know, these are it's a, a, a clear discussion about you know environmental effects and things like that. Yeah, this one is is really heavy in in the environmental aspect and stuff. And then there's these three dead ladies down at the bottom. What? It, it, it that kind of seems disjointed. I <laughs> like. Uh, oh yeah. By the way, there's been you know genocide that's happened too. Yeah, and, mm. and I'll tell you what. Like I, I I have to take a moment to uh, to to pause us here and and recognize that we are discussing and trying to describe a bat crazy mural on a podcast um so we will uh we will post some pictures on the website of this yeah we can probably do that you know that'll help <laughs> you can follow along uh if, if if we're not allowed to post pictures uh, i you know i'll break out the crayons i'll do my best <laughs> <laughs> you, you got that modeling play still right yeah that's right uh so anyways that's that's the that's mural number one mural number two perhaps I don't know the the creepiest one of the four. Yeah, the, it it shows this prominent military figure that's wearing a gas mask. He's holding a gun in the left hand, an automatic uh, rifle, and in the right hand he's got this sword that is stabbing a dove. Do, do you get it? Are do you, do, are, you, do you see what? Do you get the symbolism? I, should I go farther? <laughs> should I keep going? He is so, he is raping. A watermelon labeled peace. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> and who who doesn't hate seeing a peace melon get raped? Right. <laughs> I dedicated and, my life to the pursuit of peace. The moment I saw it, I was so mad. And behind him and, and under him there are, are dead and, and or scared and huddled children. Uh, and and women that are clutching their babies all in a line, just weeping. It's uh, it, it, it's it's disturbing. It's <laughs> the crate. There's a there's a rainbow at the top that's going into his head and and comes out gray on the other side. And then in front of it, on the floor, there's a symbol of a mine. Well, there's a mine cart <laughs> and the symbol A U A G on there. Which, if you know anything about chemistry in the periodic table you can figure out that au is gold ag is silver which was big in colorado Mm -hmm. right yep we are a mining state but there is the thought that auag stands for australian antigen which (laughs) it has been postulated that australian antigen was developed by a sponsor of the airport a nobel prize winning scientist named bloomberg and AUAG actually means Australian antigen, which is what the military figure is using to help kill the masses, and that's why he's wearing a gas mask and blah 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 blah. Why well, Australia? Why? Well, ask I, ask the the Nobel. We Prize were all disappointed with Yahoo Serious, but why would we create a, an anti-Australian weapon? And Australian antigen is is a, a form of hepatitis, I believe. Which is, and this, we'll debunk this. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just let me tell you right now, this one's going through the chipper shredder. <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that when we go through the list of, of debunks. But um, that's just, I'm throwing that out there as one of the things that I found when, when, uh, when looking through this. So, that's, that's mural number two. Uh, also, mural number two apparently has been painted over recently. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, well, so, it, was, it was it was creepy, and now I've heard, uh, you know, and this is like all good, uh, you know, theories. People have since put together this figure with the horse, and and again, this is pretty slapdash. The the, the with Lucifer, which is mm-hmm. what everyone refers to the horse as, and now you with the revelations, they say that oh, first of all, Lucifer is not. A pale horse. It's, he's a he's a bright, screaming blue. blue horse. <laughs> but they say, you know, like, oh, you've got the pale horse. This is, well, you know, the, the, this 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 soldier figure, this jackboot figure, you know, being war, being one of the the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, it, it falls apart from there. Well, it, it, I mean, that already falls apart if they're if they're saying they're both part of the same because death was on the pale horse. 
you know, war rode uh, rode a, a horse all to his own, which I yeah. assume was on fire, right? You know, or or at least just completely red. <laughs> and and I think what, like there people are trying to like get the four horsemen in on the act somehow, you know, try to get some Bible times going for them. Oh, well, good but, for them. Yeah, and that is it's 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 a bad reach, but it's something that I have I have I have read in my research. I saw some people try to try to stitch those two things together. I mean, and don't get me wrong. Both of these things on their own are creepy and weird. Yeah, why would you feel the need to combine them? Right, they don't have to form Voltron. <laughs> they can. They are fine. Voltron, Voltron <laughs> of the Illuminati. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Uh, so it is... Uh, and so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, Let's keep fine. going through there. Yeah, that, so that's uh, that's the second mural. The third mural, we get a little, get a little lighter here. Uh-huh. The children, uh, apparently of the world, because they're all dressed in, in uh, native apparel, mm-hmm. they are, are bringing weapons to a, a young German boy who is then um, turning them into plowshares, which another yeah. biblical reference. Yeah. And the military figure is dead, and he's under the anvil that this German boy is using. And there are two doves. Resting on the butt of his uh, yeah. automatic rifle. Yeah, um, mocking him, wondering why he had to stab Stuart with that giant scimitar. Yeah, his. Stuart. Stuart had some ideas. He was gonna Stuart the dove. He was gonna get a job one day. It's, yeah, this. It's almost like the it's like the last scene of It's a Small World. There's rainbows everywhere. All the children of the world are carrying banners and giggling. There, yeah, I don't. It, it's it's very densely packed with children too, which yeah. is funny. There's no shortage of them. Uh, what? What else is going on in this one? There's, I mean, there, there's there's just a ton, but it's all kind of the same thing in this one. Just all these, all these children. All the children. All the, the world. children. And there, yeah, there's. I mean, it's you know, I think it's maybe a, a timeline of sorts. Like, oh, you're gonna go through the hard times. You mean these murals in order? Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah, it's a story. It's a a, a, a lesson. Sort of um, a journey of. Yeah. Um, well, so anyways, that's that's the third one. That's the main stuff happening in that. And the fourth one, uh, the fourth, to me, the fourth one's about the craziest one. There's all kinds of stuff going on yeah. in, in the fourth one. Yeah, the fourth one's where when he really pulls out all the stops. It, it's just uh, it's busting loose with with crazy uh, uh, imagery. But there's a, a, a central figure that's holding a, basically a, the tree of peace. I think it, they they call it. And there, there are people that are running towards him. Everybody's happy. It's all, you know, sunshine and lollipops. Uh, there are animals everywhere. There's whales just doing their little cute things in the, in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's frolicking. <laughs> Hippies are, are happy and, and they've taken baths. And it's, it's basically like a, a modern Garden of Eden kind of deal. Yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, it's... It's like the hey everything's great now moment yeah. for 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 mural town. It's it's a heck of a uh, a thing you know like you know and it and it's also has this kind of weird bilateral symmetry to it. Um, like the, it's almost like there's a mirror at the center point and then everything is reflected from one side to the other, but not exactly. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a you know this you, you know what the 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 tree of life thing when. When I first uh, started looking at this mural, it, for some reason, it just it kind of reminded me of like the chakras. Do you see that at all? Like oh, you start yeah. at the bottom and yeah, you kind of head up. I it, it it's kind of it, it's a little bit closely packed together from uh, uh, vertically, maybe to be chakras, but uh, and, I don't and know. They also you know it also brings to you know full circle. All the animals that were dead in the first mural are alive and mm-hmm. happy now. The birds, you know, all the... Leopards. Yeah, everything has come back. There's a, there's all kinds of things. Oh, that there's are, monkeys at the bottom. Yeah, now we've got monkeys. <laughs> but, I mean, there's some butterflies running amok. There's a Dutch girl. She made it to the front of the line to touch the chakra plant. Huh. So uh, so those are the murals that, that are in the main... Basically, we're in the main terminal of the, the airport. Since, uh, like we mentioned... Since the the uh, the painting of them and, and the inception of the airport, uh, the second one at least has been painted over, and I think one or two of the others have been painted over. But there was such a, a, a to do about them being painted over. They I think they had them restored. Really? Not, not the second one. This and uh, this. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure. I'm sure you're already. 
I'm sure you're already on your email horse riding into the sunset uh, on how wrong we are, but from what I read, the second one has been painted over and it stays painted over. Some of the others have been painted over, but then since restored. So well, I, I will tell you this. I did take a picture of, of the, the B terminal, the main part of the B terminal. There's this uh, really neat looking, it, it's, it's a pyramid, but it's, it's a hollow pyramid. It's just basically white uh, beams going up to a central point and then kind of almost like a, a light bulb filament at the top kind of thing. But like, I looked at it and I'm like, man, that's, that's Illuminati symbolism. It's, it's a yeah. pyramid. You could stick an eye right on top of there. No problem, you know, and like... One might argue that the lights at the top are the eye. The, the eye, their knowledge being spread to the masses. Wow. But I, I could uh, I could maybe throw that up on, on the website or uh, or not. We'll, we'll see. Now, beyond the, the realm of, of weirdo art, and, I, you know, and the art is just weird. And I don't... Aside it's it's from pretty. It, it's yeah, well done. It is well done. But aside from it just kind of being... It just doesn't... I don't understand why it's in an airport. Right. I don't... I feel like the guy Same was... Same thing with a horse. Yeah. I don't understand why it's there. But beyond that, there are some very uh, concrete weird things about DIA. For example, look, what we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. So much. Uh, this network of tunnels underneath DIA. Right. The the sheer size of it. I mean, and it, it is in the middle of the United States. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in there, one of the uh, conspiracy theories is that it's actually a front... It is... Because it's in the middle of the United States, it's the least accessible mm -hmm. to, say, uh, missiles or ICBMs. Mm -hmm. That that is the bunker to which the president would go, you know, if, if everything went to shit, if there was some huge apocalypse or another. That is where the secret government would, would relocate. Yeah. I don't personally believe that. Uh, I mean, we, we have, uh, in Colorado, is a very militarized state. It, just in that we have the Air Force Academy. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there is a, a, a large Air Force base uh, just outside, just uh, east of DIA. There is uh, the Air Force Academy Peterson Air Force Base. There used to be Lowry Air Force Base that was right next to Stapleton. Hmm. So, I mean, maybe that could feed you uh, a little bit of a conspiracy in that every time they make a new airport, there is always an air, there's a fighter wing stationed next to it. Hmm. When they closed Lowry, they moved Stapleton. And now, and I forget what the name of the new uh fighter wing is but there there is a that they do have f-16s that that fly in and out just uh, just south and east of uh, a dia hmm. um, but in colorado springs you have fort carson which is uh armor it's an armor base it's well. a, primarily army tanks uh and obviously it's a huge base so there's a lot of other people there but it's it's primi primarily an armor base but most importantly at all in colorado it in cheyenne mountain about uh, right. uh 70 miles south of dia is uh, NORAD, North American Air Defense. Yep. It is a hollow mountain. Um, and I, you That's know, a classic one. Absolutely. And I went to, I went to Cheyenne Mountain High School. My, my high school was on Cheyenne Mountain. Wow. Um, and to, to the degree that you, were, you, you couldn't really go all the way up the mountain. You would be, a patrol would come find you and send you back on your way. Huh. Um, we would do experiments. We had to make model rockets once in high school. And my teacher was like, you guys want to see something cool? Wrapped an Estes model rocket in tinfoil and launched it. And four minutes later, two F-16s come flying over the school. And then ten minutes after that, two Blackhawks come doing a slow and low pass over the school. Like, they, they see everything. Everything wow. that goes on, if something holds off on radar. Now, my question to you, David, is does that make it a better place to put the president's bunker? Or because NORAD is a, was all through the cold where I was brought up, they told us this a hundred times... The, the first nuclear missiles will land on Cheyenne Mountain. Yeah. That it is the number one target. It's the target, yeah. Um, so is that, is, I mean, you know, how does that work? Is it because, of, because NORAD is such an important military installation, it tracks every single thing in orbit all over the globe. Not, not even just in orbit, but every aircraft, everything. Is that, does that make it safer to put something, say, outside of a, con, of a, of a conventional blast radius? So NORAD mm -hmm. goes up, but... You know, seventy miles, seventy yeah, seventy miles away. That's outside of a blast that's, radius. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, uh, NORAD would be a red herring, or not, not a, yeah. you know, red herring. But like, it, it's a, it's a false, uh, um, it's, it's a dummy site, basically. That's, that's what I, because why, why would it be so widely publicized? You know, unless they want the outside forces to believe, oh, this is where, this is, this is where we can get the. 
you know, president, vice president, all the yeah. uh, the Koch brothers will probably go there, I'm sure. <laughs> Pete Coors. Pete Coors. <laughs> Sam Elliott will be there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like, why why make that such a, such a, a, a shiny target mm-hmm. if you're really going to put everybody there? I, I don't know. That's uh, Unless they're just, they just hate Sun Tzu and the art of war. <laughs> unless they're just like, F you, Sun Tzu, we're going to, we're going to yeah. put our, our big American dicks on the line. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, that I mean, and it's it's interesting, you know. I mean, it, Colorado does have such a standing military presence that there's a lot of reasons why you would say, well, yeah, maybe the president yeah, would go there, and why you wouldn't. But, but uh, yeah, exactly. That standing military presence is a good reason why maybe they wouldn't. Weird. Good point, though. Um, so some of the other the other stuff about the airport too. The, it's been said that there were a few original buildings that were built, but then uh, they said they built them wrong. They were ordered to be buried, and so they built what's now the airport over top of them without destroying them or demolishing them. That's that's out there. Hmm. Uh, and then there, like you have mentioned, there there's just miles of tunnels or and or bases and or holding cells. Uh, you know. Who whatever knows? you want, whatever, whatever chud training is. facilities. You, you you give somebody a, a blank room and it can be anything. Yeah. <laughs> Just use your imagination. There's and, there's orcs down there yeah. sharpening axes. <laughs> there's there's one mountain troll. Be careful. <laughs> um, then uh, I've also heard that uh, rich the rich the one the the one percent and under you know are mm-hmm. are buying up land around dia even the the queen of england is buying land apparently i've heard that and then there are uh some phrases and words uh that are on the floors and um yeah built maybe, into... maybe on these murals but but mostly on the floors that people are like what is this alien talk yeah. all kinds of stuff it's it's Navajo. It's it ends up it's Navajo for geographical spots in Colorado. Yeah. Chill out, people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we you know Colorado is very proud of their Native American culture. As it should be sure. Um, you know, once once we got over our massacring phase, like every other part of the country. But they uh, no they they it's it's Navajo. There are Navajo phrases scattered throughout the building, and and again, you can really push that. I think there's one of them. The, the phrase that they use uh, references White Mountain. It's yeah. uh, Beshtet Guy. Um, and it, you know, even from uh, the, from DIA, you can see uh, Mount Elbert, um, which is the tallest mountain in Colorado. Uh, Long Years Peak, you can see. You know, it, they reference these things. There's also always, um, in addition to this phrase, uh, a brass piece of, like, a, a leaf or, mm. or a branch of a tree. Um, in, uh, in the bee terminal, they have a lot of fossils. Mm-hmm. Like that, they're they're brass and they're embedded in the, and and they floor. you know it's 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 they're, it's all Colorado things. It's paying homage to the the native Coloradans and to the different uh, flora and fauna we have in the state. Mm-hmm. You got a really really and one of the the things that I had so this uh, the Beshtet guy um, you know it says the White Mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, people are saying oh no that re- it's referring to a white the White Mountain in Switzerland where there's a, a Knights Templar stronghold. And then, 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 then that you know, you plug that into your new world order, well, that, which has a socket for Illuminati, which is completely compatible with tinfoil hats, right? And USB three point, right? <laughs> but it will not charge your iPhone. <laughs> man, oh man, let's uh, let's continue on the old uh, debunk list here. Yeah, let's and, let's uh, let's work through this. We'll, we'll go back back through there. So back to old Stapleton Airport, DIA. Uh, was was lobbied to be built because Stapleton basically was not that efficient. They had airports that were that were criss, uh, they had runways that were crisscrossing themselves, yeah. which means you know you you can only have you know one one or two planes at a time taking off. Yeah, you've got you've got several runways, but you can only use one of them at right. a time, so you only have one runway. They had, like you said, uh, since it was the edge of the the urban uh, sprawl at the time, once it started getting eaten up by all the suburbs and, and the housing and all that stuff, they had no room to expand. So they mm-hmm. couldn't add in, like like Southwest Airlines, I, I don't think 
either existed or, or had no. at least a, a, a port of call there at the time. So they they couldn't even uh, they couldn't even build new runways. Uh, it was as you said too close to people. People were complaining about the the noise and the safety issues and stuff. And then um, they wanted to get that automatic uh, baggage system that uh, that was just a, a load of load of uh, Lucifer crap. <laughs> it was from the future. We we pushed the envelope, but then, then we fell into it and sent it <laughs> to the bank. Hitting the check balance. Sent it to Agartha. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so that's that's basically, uh, the, I think the biggest reasons that they that they even considered building DIA. The the swastika thing. You can you can make an argument for that, but you can also make an argument that says there are a shit ton of lines that are <laughs> that yeah. you can see via runways uh, in an overhead view. And it would look like a pretty stupidly drawn swastika if you connected all of them. Right. And I've got, you know, I've yeah, I've I've seen the the overhead view. I've got a swastika, two pentagrams, a peace sign, a Mercedes Benz, and a middle finger. That's yeah. what I was able to make out of what I saw. All of which are Illuminati symbols. Though. Yeah, every single one of them. So <laughs> that is not debunked. That's rebunked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the dedication stone, as we mentioned, it does have a Freemason symbol on it, but mm-hmm. like you said, that's because there were a couple of the, the lodges that, that helped, you yeah. know, and they, and this is actually a time capsule that they, uh, they added some stuff to and, and put on there. And, uh, the Freemasons started because, uh, you know, they're, they're Masons, they know how to build, yep. why not be involved in a, you know, a very important, um, airport, which you have to have some pretty good planning to build an airport you know and, and make sure it functions well so get a freemason in there so why not uh the the symbol for the old uh, australian antigen yeah wow i love the magnificent reach on that yeah it's it is in a, in a mine cart and i hate to break it to you but from everything i could find australian antigen symbol is H B S A G capital H capital B lowercase S capital A lowercase G not A U A G and it was developed by a Nobel winner named uh, Bloomberg but I don't think there's I don't think anybody has been able to to link him to being a sponsor of the airport which that would kind of I don't know but besides antigens don't sponsor things anymore ever since that whole blow up over new coke they don't they've gotten out of the business I thought it was crystal pepsi <laughs> yeah. but yeah and and like I said australia antigen is uh a form of, of hepatitis or something too I think I, I don't know I mean yeah yeah it's, a, it's in, a, instead of this this Huge, deadly, deadly virus, contagion, outbreak, monkeys, I Stephen think, King. Yeah, and you know, they're not even, yeah, it, it's it's such a reach predicated upon a supposition <laughs> that was started by, as a hunch, like it, it <laughs> that, and all of that is balancing on a roller skate that's missing a wheel. <laughs> but we do have the key to it. Yeah. Um, now, the murals, according to the artist, Leo, uh, he, I mean, he basically wanted to show the journey of, of brutality and peace, kind of, uh, that, that kind of idea. And he wasn't, you know, going to sacrifice his style and, and what he knew and where he was coming from culturally to show this, um, this story. Doesn't make it any less weird to be put in an airport. Yeah. But, exactly. and that's why I asked, like, did, did the designers just, were they just like, um... Here's a bunch of paint buckets. Here's some walls. Go for it. Right. You know, and whatever whatever you do is going to be art. Yeah, knock, knock yourself out. Uh, you know. That's that's the thing I can't get over. It's like, why did they commission him to do... They're like, you know what? Let's symbolize the journey of destruction, but then peace results when everyone forms together. Or were they literally just like, hey, dude... Uh, are you busy uh, Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we could we could really use a, uh, a real weird mural up there. We? Just make it colorful. What's what's all? I don't know. But anyways, he he had uh, he had his reasons. There's no proof that the original buildings were buried under the new airport. That that's just kind of speculation at this point. Yeah. I, well, and that's the all those things like oh no no everyone saw that happen. 
It, like if you if you ever fly into or out of DI, look out the window. Notice that you will not see anything that even sniffs of civilization. That's true. Going into or coming out of DIA, yeah. it is in the middle of nowhere. There's no one just that happens to be buzzing on by the new airport site. <laughs> the, the there is, I mean, it was kind of weird when I was flying out of there because I, I it was it was basically a layover for me. I, I I took another plane out when I got there, and when I was when I was taking that uh, that plane out, I did look out the window, and the the runway I was on was lower than the actual terminal where you know most of the action happens it, it was uh on, on a, a lower level and then mm-hmm. there were there were quite a few of these big rectangular holes kind of that that were dug out and and then it looked like they were filled with cement so they were these rectangular cement holes and I always, you know, I, I mass just, graves of the construction workers. The mm-hmm. secrets of DIA could not be released into the world. So the moment they were done, the king of DIA, um, Reginald Jeppesen the Third, ordered all of them to be blinded. But one of them still sang, and oh, why man. he would only and sing. That's, right. that's why we're talking about it today. Yeah. But well, I mean, these were in, they were empty. They weren't you know filled in. But it was it did make you think for a second, like ooh. what a what a uh, terribly convenient place to dump a bunch of bodies, right? <laughs> Um, anyway, that there's there's no other proof really that we could find that the buildings were buried. Uh, the tunnels, like you said, the the airport plans to expand. They didn't want to run into that problem of Stapleton, where it's like, well, we've got you know new airlines and stuff that want to come in. We can't do anything about it because now there's there's property built you know around yeah. here and stuff. So tunnels are going to be uh, built in the event that they do need to build another terminal or build some more runways, you know, whatever. And you have to keep in mind when this was built. You know, the, the mid '90s. There's plenty of money so that they don't, you know, they can plan for future growth and that doesn't right. kill, you know, like there's plenty of money to do that. You know, they, T, you'd think people might uh, pay attention to that these days. <laughs> to, nope. To, no. No, that's... Sorry. That that was 20 years ago. Yeah. No more. Infrastructure is a fine thing to invest in. Yeah. Oh, well. But anyway... There's the argument that the tunnels and, and underground stuff were, that was built for expansion. There's also no proof that rich people are buying up land around there or the Queen of England has yeah. any interest in coming to Denver. God, I mean, again, look out the look out the window of the plane. You don't want any of the land yeah. up there. You know, there's, there's like, in addition to, you know, there, there are like airplane related things. There's car rentals. And then there's a yeah. couple of road salt silos. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there there are there's like a Holiday Inn that's a little ways away and an yeah. Outback Steakhouse which I've been to, but uh, other than that, yeah, there's not much in there. And then as we said, the uh, the Navajo words and the terms there, mm-hmm. they're Navajo. They're not friggin' alien. Yeah, and I, I I misspoke. They were uh, not Swiss. Uh, Mount Blanc in France is oh. where the uh, the the Knights Templar thing. And then there was a reference within the night again. Oh, it's in France. There was a Knight Templar there, and you know the Knights Templar said something about the New World New World Order once. They've Rock, got all the money. Rockefeller's time machine. Ah, Bilderberger. <laughs> J.P. Morgan. Ah. <laughs> By the way, did you hear they uh, they got like a million dollars for that? Uh, let's build a goddamn Tesla museum. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that that is cool? awesome. We you know what I'd like to believe we uh, we play a little part in that. I I, I wish we had gotten that that, that episode out before <laughs> because we we totally uh, recorded that before. This guy put that together, but it's it's really cool to to hear that they're doing that and good for them. And I actually went on. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that in this this in that podcast, but there there's a Tesla Motors company that makes uh, Tesla cars that run on Tesla coils. Can I say Tesla one more time? But, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Um, and and the cars look look pretty badass. Yeah. I, I and I was like, man, maybe I could save up and, and get one of these things. No, no, you'll never know. L- low ends like fifty grand. Yeah, and they're not. I think they just like started coming off the line, or some. Most of them are planned for like twenty fourteen or something. It's like, man, <laughs> make make the stuff so so that real people can get them. Exactly. We you know like rich people don't give a f- about Nikola Tesla. It's we who want a Tesla mobile. Right. And Tesla wouldn't have won his cars to cost that much, I no. doubt. 
Ugh. Unless he was getting a percentage of it. I mean, he was pretty bitter about yeah. all of it. <laughs> he did need some cash there. Too. Yeah, he didn't, it didn't work out well for him. Ugh. But anyway, uh, so that's uh, that's DIA there in, in, a, in a very large square mile nutshell. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's awesome. I want to keep an open mind about this. You know, I don't want to just say all of this is complete bull but a lot of it seems to be complete bull i you know and i I, do you think it's like i mean like there's a little part of me that says oh there's smoke there's fire but on the other hand what other airport has even one weird story but like dia has like a hundred yeah but how many airports that size have been built in the in this this age in the in in the last in this age all right we stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> but seriously, like, what what other airport has been built in the last 20 years that, that's of this magnitude? Can, can you think of any? Reagan, maybe? I, I, I'm, I'm, this is a dumb question because I have no idea yeah. about airports. I don't go out there yeah. and keep tabs on, like, oh, man, did you hear? Portland's getting a new airport. <laughs> Ooh, do tell. Dish. <laughs> airport da- Weekly, the magazine. Yeah, that's, that's something we're going to add to the uh, the end of each podcast. Uh, <laughs> airport gossip. <laughs> <laughs> Worst podcast ever. Uh, I've got This one's got a picture of a Boeing in a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm just my point was that because it's it's newer and there's lots more crazy people out there in the world. I don't know. Yeah, stuff. Maybe there's just there's treated. there's so there's so little going on in eastern Colorado that there's plenty of they can just make up your own news. Yeah, Colorado is working really hard on looking like Mordor. It 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 wants it so bad. It, but the fires are out now, right? Yeah, the fire season's over. The big sweet baby Jesus crazy times are over. See, the thing that pisses me off about that is that I never heard that. I never heard that they had that under control. All I heard about was the death and destruction that was going on. Mm-hmm. But once once everything was cool, apparently, nothing. Yeah. And that's that's your new world order. That's the media right there. Yeah. You, you know, but on the other hand, you know, it's kind of hard to have a news program about things that aren't happening. You know, maybe they say it once and then it's done, so you don't get another update. It's not going to go on to the ticker. A good point. A good point, yeah. Colorado not on fire. Day 15. <laughs> very, very good point. And I... I to be to be fair, I don't you know watch the news. I just see you know some headlines here and there from certain sites. Um, I just I, I must have uh, I don't know been busy that day. <laughs> the siege of optimism continues. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm gonna go on and say that the country needs that. Yeah, that's true. I we think can... we need an ongoing optimism yeah. siege. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll sign that. <laughs> Uh, speaking of optimism, how about some puns? Oh, wait, I, I, I just came up with something, all right? I got a pun for the puns, all right? Oh, okay. Welcome to Punderdome! Oh, yeah. it's the Punderdome. Oh, oh, that's probably never been said before. No, I hope not. <laughs> I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> uh, what do you, you got What do you got for us? You want me to go Flores? first? I um, always want you to go first. I... I have some uh, of such middling degree, I don't know which one to pick. I, I'm going to go with this one that I, I'm sure has been done before. I am dead sure that this is all over the place. But if you're the one who came up with what he's about to say, please send us an email and we will send you nothing, but we will acknowledge that we got your email. Absolutely. And and we might uh, we might say something about oh, it. Oh no no! We might no. compare you to a pumpkin on Flora air. Flora will send you a uh, a wave and MP3 file of your very own um, electric lightning horse sound. Uh, I'll I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I wish you could Why see not? the defeated look on his face when he said that. I'll do that. I, I, Damn it! I have such problems with getting the website to work anyway. I <laughs> might as well throw that yeah. in the mix. Uh, all right. So, anyways, this is a perfume shop uh-huh. called the New World Odor. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I do like that. Which P P S is patchouli? That's the New World Odor. Oh gosh. All Maybe. right. I've got. Uh, I'm. I'm right. Just. Just right at your heels. Uh, <laughs> this is located in Terminal C of DIA um, for uh, in-flight snacks. It's New World hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> 
Yeah, see? <laughs> don't, don't hate yourself. Hate, hate both of us. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? Uh, I have... You can visit an optometrist called D-I-A... Oh, God. Do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> it? That's actually also on the sign. <laughs> and and the I, the word I, ha, is, is surrounded by an I, and underneath it, there's a pyramid. Oh, nice. See? Take that. All right. Uh, I've got uh, a business. Uh, it's the Takuma Brothers Creepy Mass Transit Murals, discouraging hobos <laughs> and loiterers since 1995. <laughs> I, I like that... At least one of your puns every week could be found on like an old navy shirt. <laughs> God, I'm missing out on a ton of money. You just monetized this podcast. Yes, I can finally hire somebody to put this thing together instead of having to stress over it. Oh man, I'm getting the bills paid with these things. Thank goodness. <laughs> So uh, if you uh, work for Old Navy and yeah. uh, have any say so, yeah, you want you want some occult and regionally specific t-shirt ideas. <laughs> uh, lots of long sleeves. Yeah, I, you I could sell like. them in the airport at TIA. Oh, see the T is for t-shirts. You got you got a bonus one this week. Oh God, I am schmuck. the best slash worst. I am <laughs> I am a war criminal. <laughs> I, I mentioned a, um, a pumpkin in there, but I think we got through most of this without uh, having to compare the airport to a pumpkin for my sake. Oh, uh, well, there was a raped watermelon. <laughs> the, raped <laughs> melon. The, the melon of peace. <laughs> <laughs> the peace melon. It didn't do anything. All it did was make the summer barbecue awesome. <laughs> it brought friends together. Yeah. Man, we when when and if if and when we we start selling T-shirts, yeah, for blurry photos, one of them is gonna have to say, "Don't rape the peace melon." <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just a melon on a table with a happy face on it or a worried face. I don't know. <laughs> I'm uh, also also one uh, that says, "I've explained your concept," and it's just a picture of a pumpkin. A pumpkin. <laughs> Gosh, now now we need to get on this boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, sorry, old Navy, you had your chance yeah, and you I blew it. I, I didn't even check the email. That's, yeah, see, that's really the not phone your fault, didn't ring okay. in the 17 seconds since we came up with this idea. Window is closed. Window is closed. You never had our phone number in the first place, so mm-hmm. too bad. All yep. right. Uh, anyways, I've been uh, and will still be David Flora. I have got about. 18 hours left of Dave Stecco, and we will let you know how that turns out next week. Stay tuned. This has been Blurry Photos. Send us an email. Send us something. Go to our website, blurryphotos.org. Fill out the form and uh, have fun. Peace out. Bye. Bye.